Last week, uh, our niece, Phyllis, came for a visit. One of the first things that she commented on as we began endless conversations was that she said, Uncle Dan, I'm reading the most wonderful book. It's called How We Die. She told me it helped her understand that her husband, Alan, was showing signs of dementia, which was an early process in his dying. I told her, I have a great story for you about the author of that book, Sherwin Newland. He was a guest at our house for dinner one evening. It began, uh, <clears throat> the evening had begun when he gave a lecture in the Texas Medical Center to uh, humanism in medicine. Uh, that was uh, his current uh, concern. He had had a long history as a surgeon at Yale, had written a number of books, and now was uh, not operating, but was spending time trying to make people understand that if diseases were important, but it was the patient who needed some understanding. Uh, we picked him up uh, after his lecture, and on his way to our house, Robert asked him, how should we address you, uh, Dr. Newland or uh, Professor Newland? He said, Dr. DeBakey calls me Shep. And we asked him if he, if I was all right with him, if we called him Shep. He said, of course. He came to our house. Uh, we were joined by Dr. William Winters and his wife, Barbara. Bill is uh, in charge of education at uh, Texas uh, at, at the Methodist Hospital. We served wine and within a few moments, uh, Shep began to talk. He uh, obviously had in mind the matter of humanism and how to treat people as human beings with love and, and care. I don't remember his exact words, but it was obvious he was reliving a lot of his background. Like the Jacksons, his family was from Russia. They were originally Weinbergers, and the family name was changed to Nudelman to uh, try to avoid service in the Russian army. So he became Shepsala Nudelman. Nudelman meant a man who sews. His father was a tailor. They came to America and he and his family lived in the Bronx. It was he and him and his brother Harvey, his 
mother and father and aunts and uh, grandmother. They lived in very close circumstances. His father was very difficult to get along with, having high rages, suffering from bladder stones, and sometime in his early adolescence, Shep began to be bothered with depression and obsessiveness. It got so severe he ended up in a mental institution. He underwent 20 electric shocks. He was a little better, but then things got worse again. He almost became subject to a lobotomy, but uh, his residence said he would take care of him personally. That lobotomy was dangerous and not likely to be successful. The resident spent a lot of time with him and he came out of his problem, went back into surgery and became very successful. During all this time, he had conflict with his father. You can read about this in his book called Lost in America, A Journey with My Father. So he went through a period of leaving his home country of Russia coming to the Bronx. He went through changing his name. He went through living in close circumstances. He was subject to his father's anger. He was subject to his father having to depend upon him to take him to the hospital, to take him to clinics. He went through a period of intense rage until he finally began to understand what his father was going through and his rage turned to love and his father's anger at his own illnesses and pain turned to love and they found each other. There was some of that in what Shep Newland was talking about, the need for love, the need for understanding, Theme for warmth between human beings. When he finally stopped talking and ran down, well, I, I informed Lucy, my caretaker, that we were ready to eat. The first thing she did was to bring in a large platter of Texas food, meaning barbecue. Robert had ordered it, and there was brisket and ribs and chicken and sausage. Shep was excited to see such food, helped himself twice. When that was finished, Lucy took away the platter and returned with two Texas pies pecan pie and pumpkin pie. Shep had a piece of it each and expressed his amazement as how well he enjoyed food when he ordinarily didn't eat a great deal. When the evening finished and Robert helped Shep with his jacket, I asked Shep if I could give him anything, and he said, yes, I'll take Lucy. The food impressed him. I got a letter from him later thanking me for the evening and remembering 
his experience with Lucy and telling me, me that his wife understood his evening and expressed her agreement that Lucy sounded like something she too would like.